So now in the last video, we looked at the non-inverting comparator. The diagram below it is the inverting comparator. Uh, so that's one reason why we're doing this video. Plus, it's uh, the opposite circuit, so it's a good time to do so anyways. We have a low input right here. It's connected to ground. You can see the red LED is connected uh, to ground. And so we know that the output is coming from the positive supply, as good as it can do. If I turn the trim pot up so that uh, I got our reference voltage set to about half of the supply voltage, about 2.5 out of 5. When I break the halfway point, I get closer to the positive supply. Then the blue LED lights up. So you can see we're at the positive supply. So is the blue LED. So that lets us know that the op amp is connected to the negative supply as well as it can do. So now we'll zoom in on the schematic that I drew. And uh, some of this stuff is stuff I got from the data sheet. I always check the data sheet. So that's the maximum, uh, or that's the working range of the voltage that we should do. Um, if you make it into a dual supply, you know, of course the numbers are in half. We're not gonna go over this uh, too much. Uh, so here's another thing. Um, when you hear of a current source or a current sink, um, if it's talking about an output, then, a current sink takes the positive supply voltage and sinks it to ground. And a current source, when it's the output of, uh, in this case, the op amp, means that the positive supply comes from the output and then it heads to ground. So it's the source of the power or it sinks the power. Um, so just thought I'd mention that since it's written on there. And uh, I, I don't know what to say about that. So in any case, uh, I made this diagram a long time ago. We have the op amp, so it's a comparator. There's nothing uh, bringing back the output to either of the inputs. The inputs are just on their own. We have a fixed voltage right here. So we refer to that as the reference voltage. Unless we change the supply voltage, this voltage is gonna be held steady. When it comes to op amps, the output wants to be more like the non-inverting, the plus right here, than the inverting. Another thing I'm gonna mention is on the physical component, the uh, non-inverting input is below the inverting input for this particular op amp. I always check the data sheet for the uh, pin layout or by a kit where it shows the pin layout. Um, so you can see on the schematic, I put the plus above the minus, probably just so I could uh, copy this, just change the two symbols because all we did was change where the reference signal goes and our or our reference voltage and our signal voltage. Um, that's literally all I did. So that's all I had to do, copy that in MS Paint and swap the two symbols. Uh, but on the actual component, the plus is below the minus. So you always gotta pay close attention to that. Physical component never changes, whereas schematics, it will show either. And uh, maybe it'll be the arrow will be pointing down and they'll be on top or to the left or whatever. Um, it's not always to the left. So I thought I'd mention that. Um, and as always, there's two op amps in this integrated circuit. We're just using one out of two of them. If we had a second op amp uh, as part of this circuit, then uh, we could use the other side and have it say two out of two. The op amp that we're not using, um, you'd probably be best off making it a voltage follower where the plus input is to ground so that the output is also held to ground. But you know, you're probably just fine without doing that. Um, but usually you don't wanna leave a stuff just floating, but probably won't damage anything if you do. So in any case, here we have the circuit. So uh, up closer, we have to the positive supply, the trim pot. And um, you know, as long as it's above half the supply, as I said before, we'll have a low output. And if we go low enough, then we'll have a high output. Um, so it's inverted, it's the opposite. So now I got my handheld oscilloscope here. I used it in the last couple of videos and really it kinda needed to be charged anyways. Um, this does discharge over time when you're not using it. Um, but uh, any case, we have a low input. It is completely to ground as you can see there. And um, I do not know why that, uh, that dimmed. It should have stayed lit. Um, maybe that's not plugged in. Okay, um, it's probably operating on battery. But uh, any case, so uh, we have a high output. Um, you can see our trim pot is down low. That is the output up there. It's way above 
zero volts. That's the main thing. And I don't want this to fade off while I'm demonstrating. So do that. Um, we're going to increase the voltage. So now what you're going to see when I get above the halfway point, boom, all of a sudden the voltage uh, dropped right there. So we're up way above the halfway point. It stays low. Blue LED is lit up. And then we go down and again, uh, boom, it goes up. So um, this is the inverted. The output's going to be the opposite of what the input is. Not exactly the opposite voltage, but the opposite when it comes to high or low. And you may think, like, what's what's the use of this? Well, I've had other circuitry where uh, we have a voltage and then uh, our signal voltage, and then there's the reference voltage that is away. You can have the output do the signal voltage. So maybe it's, in this case, discharging a capacitor. As the capacitor discharges, it gets closer to the reference voltage. Then all of a sudden, boom, the reference voltage goes up, and then the capacitor uh, went, went the wrong way. And then the capacitor starts charging up, and the output goes down. Capacitor discharges, output goes up. So that's one way to get a timing. If you can have the output affecting the capacitor charge and discharge. And um, so when the capacitor is uh, discharging, the output could be low. And then once it gets to a certain point, the output goes high, which causes the capacitor to charge. So I've shown that in other videos. Not going to go over that too much. But yeah, we saw the basic uh, waveform right here. So just uh, talk about the oscilloscope for a second there. I got it in a roll mode. That means it just keeps slowly moving along. If I made it so it went faster, at some point I'll have it set so fast that it just starts taking a snapshot of whatever the waveform was at the time. But since we're very slowly changing our, I don't even think you call it a waveform, but we're slowly changing the uh, voltage, I just have kind of a slow roll going. And you can, uh, you know, set maybe uh, one second per division there or uh, two divisions per second or something like that. You can make adjustments. And also, we got one volt per division. So a couple of videos ago, I was working with 10 volts, and uh, that would be the very top of this. Um, no, this only has eight squares right there. So 10 volts would be up off in the distance there. And uh, so I changed uh, both of these lines so that each square was two volts, two, four, six, eight, whereas now it's a uh, one, two, three, four. So here's another thing. I can set the trim pot. Um, yeah, that's the lower one. I'll go all the way to ground. I can set it all the way to zero volts. That is not going up to five volts, especially with the uh, load. And without a load, this would go to zero volts. Um, now that one can go to five, um, but uh, it cannot go all the way to the positive rail, even without a load. The load throws it off. So now it's down to a zero, but I'll remove the high side load as well. And um, this line's gonna go down, but you can see where it is at uh, five volts. And uh, when I lower this below halfway, boom, that doesn't jump up to five. It stops at uh, below four even. Even without a load, it can't even get to four volts just because it's a single supply op amp. Um, so you always got to look at what the output is. This is a single supply output op amp for its limitations. And you got to work around if you need it to do more than what it can do. You got to find other uh, amplifiers that can pass along what you are after. But in any case, this went on long enough. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.